Hi, John Park here. This is one of a series of pilot podcasts for a new coaching program that I'm developing for Disruptech. I plan to use the tried and trusted Disruptech approach, using state-of-the-art video and audio production to unlock the secrets of playing guitar. We will use what we learn to help you write some great music. One of the mistakes I made when learning guitar was failing to spend enough time understanding music theory. I started learning guitar at the age of 14, already musically trained as a highly accomplished brass musician. I focused on using my musical ear to listen to other people's music and learning the mechanics of how to play it on guitar. After over 30 years playing, recording and producing, I realised that I was coming up with some great ideas but had absolutely no idea how I was doing it. I was playing primarily by ear, as many guitarists do. But last year I decided that I had to unlock the secrets of music by learning more music theory. I've spent the last year watching countless YouTube videos and reading books, and I've realised that no one has made this as easy as it could be or should be. So that is what I plan to do in this series of videos. So let's get started with what I believe is the first thing any aspiring musician needs to do right at the very beginning. We're going to learn the notes used to construct musical scales. It really is as easy as ABC, because most of the scales used in Western music are labelled using the first seven letters of the alphabet. We start at A and then move progressively through to G. After that, we move on to another A and continue up the next sequence, which is exactly the same sequence of notes, just an octave higher. We call it an octave because the sequence of notes in a scale needs eight notes. To move from the starting note through the seven notes of the scale, before we hit the note that we originally started on, but an octave, that is eight notes, higher up. You already know what this sounds like, and to illustrate this, I will play the scale of C major. I'll play it up and down a couple of times, and I'm sure you will recognise it instantly. <laughs> was the C major scale, which is the foundation stone for much of music as we know it today. But there are other silent notes that we don't use in this particular key. They sit between the familiar notes that you have just listened to. We need these extra notes to learn how to play in different keys and scales. Between C and D we have a C sharp, but it can also be known as a D flat. It is exactly the same note, we just label it differently, depending on the scale that we are playing in. Between D and E, we then have a D-sharp or E-flat. Between F and G, we then have an F-sharp or G-flat. Between G and A, we have G-sharp or A-flat. And finally, between A and B, we have an A-sharp or B-flat. At this point, you are probably screaming at the video that I have missed two out. I haven't. The scale notes B and C don't have another note in between them, neither do E and F. The notes B sharp or C flat simply don't exist. The same is true with E sharp and F flat. Please just accept this for now until I produce another video on the history of how the musical scale was developed and how it is all dependent on physics and how early musicians and composers chose how to split up the intervals between the same notes an octave apart. So how do we remember which notes have extra steps between them, and which ones don't? It's easy to remember the ones that don't, with a simple acronym, B blunt. The notes B and E have no sharps, so they are by definition blunt. This is how you remember. So in today's lesson, we have constructed the C major scale. It is formed of seven notes that we play out loud, with an additional five notes that we have to pass by without playing. 
but that are definitely still there. So starting from the first note, any scale has to pass through 12 half steps before we reach the same note again an octave higher. The sound of the scale is determined by which seven notes we actually play. So now you know all of the notes. We now need to learn how to find them. If I now remove the notes, does the shape left behind remind you of anything? If I change the shape ever so slightly, does that help? What if I make the colour of the in-between notes black? If you haven't got it by now, you never will. The piano keyboard. It's designed around the notes used in modern music. So without realising it, on your journey to learn guitar theory, you have already learned the notes on a piano. So as a test, simply label them on this piano keyboard using what you have learned in this lesson. Or if you have access to a piano or a keyboard, play a note at random and see if you can instantly name it. Next time, we will use what you have learned to map out the notes on a guitar fretboard. Thanks for watching.